Hello, I'm Kevin McCain. I teach philosophy at the University of Alabama at Birmingham, and today I'll be discussing the epistemic regress problem. The epistemic regress problem is a very old problem in epistemology. We find reference to this issue as early as the writings of Aristotle. And while it's sometimes used as a way of arguing in support of skepticism, for instance, we find this sort of move in the works of Sextus Empiricus, the most important role of the regress problem is its function in helping us get clear about the structure of epistemic justification. So when we explore the regress problem and various responses to this problem, it helps us to get clearer about how our reasons must be related to one another and to the things we believe in order for those beliefs to be justified. Diving into the regress problem, one of the easiest ways to get a handle on it is to consider the sort of questioning that a small child might put forth when discussing things with their parents. For instance, a parent might say, it's time to leave the playground, to which a child may respond, why? The parent may respond, well, we need to get home. Why? So we can get ready for dinner. Why? This sort of questioning can go on for a very long time. Often it'll end with the parent saying, because I said so, or eventually just distracting the child and getting him or her to think about something else. But what's interesting is that very sort of why questioning, the continuing of asking for reasons, right? reasons not just in support of the initial claim, but reasons for those reasons. That's what lies at the heart of the regress problem. So take any belief that you have that presumably is a justified belief, so a belief that you have good reason for. Here's a sample one. So assume that you have good reason to believe the president is at the White House. Well, plausibly, someone could ask you, why do you think that? A plausible response might be, well, I saw on the news that the president would be at the White House today. Well, why do you trust what you saw on the news? Well, the news tends to be accurate about this sort of thing. Why do you think that? And you can see we're on to the very same sort of questioning that goes on with the small child and the parent, except for this is questioning your reasons for your belief. This sort of regress of questioning, where you give a reason and your interlocutor asks, why do you have that reason? Or what's your reason for your reasons? Is the regress problem. And this is something that we can apply to any belief that you have. This is part of what allowed people like Sextus Empiricus to try to argue that the regress problem leads to a general skepticism. Because if there's a problem for one of your beliefs in this way, it's plausible that this same regress problem can pose a problem for all of your beliefs. Now, when we're exploring this regress of reasons, where you've given a reason for your belief, and then you're asked for a reason for that reason, and a reason for that reason, and so on, it seems like we have three options. One, this chain of reasons comes to an end, so there's an end point. Two, the chain of reasons continues infinitely. So for any reason you give, there's another reason for that reason. Or three, this chain of reasons circles back on itself. So for instance, you have a reason for your belief that P, which is your belief that Q, your reason for your belief that Q is your belief that R, and your reason for your belief that R is your belief that P. In this case, your reasons go into a circle. The skeptic claims none of these options can generate genuine justification. So, since this applies to all of your beliefs, you have no justified beliefs. But more important than the skeptical take on this is how these three options that we considered, that the chain ends somewhere, that it goes on infinitely, or that it circles back on itself, these give us direction in trying to figure out the structure of epistemic justification. And in fact, all of the primary views of epistemic justification fall somewhere under these three. And then a fourth one being skepticism, just the denial that there are justified beliefs. The first is the most popular view in contemporary epistemology, and arguably the most popular view of the structure of justification since at least the time of Aristotle. That is, the chain of reasons ends. This is foundationalism. So the thought is, 
all of your justification, so all of your justified beliefs, if they're justified, and we trace back the reasons for those beliefs, and the reasons for the reasons for those beliefs, eventually we hit a foundation of reasons or beliefs that are themselves justified, but they don't require any further justification. Often, in contemporary epistemology, the foundational beliefs are beliefs that are justified on the basis of an experience. Because an experience, at least foundationalists claim, an experience can justify a belief, but there's no need for a further reason in support of the experience itself. It's not the sort of thing that one has a reason for. When you look out and you see a tree, you have an experience. There's no reason in support of that experience. Right? Your visual experience is your reason for believing you see a tree, but there's no further reason in support of that experience. And foundationalists claim that these foundational beliefs, the ones that end the chain of reasons, they stop the regress, foundationalists claim those beliefs are justified and all other beliefs rest on this foundation of justified beliefs. The second response claims that the chain of reasons goes on infinitely. This view has only really come about in very recent times, in the late 20th century and contemporary times. And this is called infinitism. And this is roughly the idea that as long as this chain of reasons could continue, where you have another reason for each of your reasons infinitely, then you have justification. And as I mentioned, this is a very new view because historically this view was largely dismissed by both skeptics and non-skeptics alike. Pretty much everyone thought that infinitism was not a real option. The third option is that the chain of reasons goes in a circle. And this is the second most popular. As I mentioned, foundationalism is the most popular. Infinitism has started to gain some ground, but is still relatively unpopular. But coherentism has this other view, and that is that the chain of reasons circles on itself. Now, it's somewhat misleading to describe coherentism in this way, because coherentists, in fact, deny the entire setup of the regressive reasons. So, one of the assumptions that we've been working under is that justification proceeds in a linear fashion. What I mean by that is your reason for believing P is that Q. Your reason for believing Q is R. Your reason for believing R is S, and so on. This is a sort of linear progression where you have one reason or a set of reasons that supports another, and that supports another, and so on. Coherentists think of justification differently. So less of a chain of reasons that either stops or circles or continues infinitely, coherentists think of justification more along the lines of a web of beliefs, where you have various beliefs that are connected to one another in different ways. And according to the coherentist, justification arises when this collection of beliefs is related to one another in the appropriate ways. So they claim there isn't this sort of regress of reasons because your reasons form this system or, as I mentioned, a web analogy. And justification arises when the components of this system or web are connected in the right ways. Those are the main options in responding to the regress problem. So again, the regress problem is this idea that for any justified belief or any belief at all, we can ask what your reasons are. And then for each reason given, we can continue to ask what your reason is for that reason. The skeptic claims this shows a problem with justification, so that none of our beliefs are justified. But most epistemologists claim that it doesn't lead us to skepticism. Rather, the regress problem teaches us something about the structure of justification. Foundationalists claim that it teaches us that justified beliefs eventually have to go back and rest on a foundation of basic beliefs that are justified themselves by something like experience that doesn't require a further reason. Infinitists tell us that the structure of justification is such that for any belief and any reason we give for that belief, we are able to give another reason. And that can continue infinitely. And that's what it means to have justification. The coherentist 
tells us that the structure of justification isn't linear in this fashion, as the regress problem seems to set it up. But instead, justification occurs when beliefs are connected in the right sort of way. So when you get a complex web of beliefs, or another way to understand it is a system of beliefs. And when this system of beliefs bears the right sort of relationships within itself, then you get justification. So these are the three main understandings of the structure of justification that arise from the regress problem.